So hi everyone, in this video we're going to deal with an actual mathematical example of our short run and long run costs. So suppose a firm has a long run production function given as this, so that's Q is equal to K 0.5 L 0.5. And suppose that in the short run, K capital is fixed at some level K naught, K meaning the firm has no control over the level of capital in the short run. And let's further assume that both the wage rate and the rental rate of capital uh, per hour is $4. So uh, notice we have here a pretty standard Cobb-Douglas production function. So our first task is, one, we need to find the equation of the firm's short-run cost function. So we do that, okay? So since it's a short-run cost function, we know that since, okay, in the short run, since k is equal to k naught, okay, then the short run production function, okay, should be equal uh, to q is equal to uh, l 0 0.5 times k naught 0 0.5. Remember, it's not going to be equal to k because k is not variable in this case because it's fixed in the short run. So we need to modify our production function given as this okay and since we're only now dealing with one input okay we can calculate for what we can do to make sure that input is optimal so therefore for the optimal okay the optimal l in the short run is okay so we have so notice, okay, what we're going to do is from this function here, we're just going to isolate out L. So that's L 0 0.5 is equal to um, Q over K naught 0 0.5. Okay, why are we trying to calculate the optimal L? So remember, K naught or your capital is fixed. You have no control over it. So if we wanted to do a, map, a cost minimization procedure in the short run, we can, and it's just going to reduce to this because remember, we cannot satisfy uh, our first order conditions when something is fixed. So say, for example, capital is fixed, there's a chance that we won't be able to satisfy our first order conditions. So we want to isolate out L. So we can compute for the optimal L. So let's simplify this. So let's square both sides. So our optimal amount of labor employed, so L dot, L dash or L prime, that's just Q squared all over K naught, okay? Hence, okay, hence, your short run cost function, that's just equal to, okay, in the short run, you have W times the amount of labor you employ plus R times the fixed level of capital that's used. So we get, uh, since both W and R are equal to 4, so that's 4 L prime plus for k naught okay simplifying we get src that's equal to four times uh q squared all over k naught plus four k naught and this is your short run cost function now look at it and you'll see that the short run cost function is a function of q and the fixed input which is uh k in this case and what we'll do now is what we can do is from this short run cost function, we can derive okay, the long run cost function. And how we did that in the last video is we varied the level of K. So there's an optimum procedure that we do that uh, the long run cost will act like as an envelope to the short run cost. And essentially we can derive the long run cost function from short run cost functions. So, the second task we do is we derive the firm's long run cost function from the short run cost function. So we do that, uh, we implore this. So the short run cost function, minimizing amount, okay, minimizing amount of capital, of capital satisfies, okay, satisfies the first order condition for a minimum, okay, SRC, which is the partial of your short run cost function with respect to K naught being equal to zero. Okay, so 
in this case, okay, when this derivative is true, um, the short run cost function is at its minimum. Because remember, um, in this case, capital is fixed. When we take the derivative that's equal to zero, we're at an extremum, and that extremum happens to be a minimum. So, okay, what we do now is remember our short run cost function. Okay, our we have our short run cost function that's equal to 4 q squared over k naught plus 4 k naught. What we do is we're going to take the derivative of that, so partial SRC with respect to K0. And what we're going to get is um, if we derive this first form here with respect to K0, we're going to get uh, negative uh, 4Q squared over K0 squared, uh, applying quotient rule. Then derivative of the second form here with respect to K0, that's just 4, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to equate that to zero. So we're going to be left with negative 4q squared all over k naught squared plus 4 equal to zero. Then what we do now is we, uh, we uh, simplify it. Okay, so uh, we have here mm, 4 is equal to 4q squared all over k naught squared. What, what we can do is we can... Uh, multiply both sides by one fourth. Okay, that will reduce the side to one is equal to Q squared all over K naught squared. Or simply, okay, what we can do is we can arrange this, rearrange it, so that's just K naught squared equal to Q squared, okay? Simplifying and isolating with respect to K naught, we're given a level of K naught in the short run equal to just uh, Q, okay? Technically, it's positive or negative Q, but remember, Q can never be negative in our domain. So therefore, okay, therefore, our short-run cost function is just going to be equal to, um, so remember, we, we have this function here, okay, so we have our short-run cost function there, so we have 4Q squared all over Q, so K0 is equal to Q, plus 4Q, okay. And when we did that, when we plugged in that, okay, so notice everything here now is a function of Q and Q is now variable, okay? So you're expressing it all with respect to something that's variable. So our short run cost in this case is now equal to our long run cost. So let's simplify it. So 4Q squared divided by Q, that's just 4Q plus 4Q, that's equal to 8Q. And our long run cost, okay, is now equal to 8Q. Notice in our long run cost function, there is no more k naught because all vari all inputs in the long run are variable inputs. Therefore, your long run cost function should just be a function of Q. And that's an example of short run costs and long run costs.